Hello everybody, my name is Zen and welcome to my ultimate seasonal starting guide for Diablo 3. In this guide, I'm going to run you through the fastest way to level 1 to 70 at the beginning of a new season and also how to jumpstart your progress through some neat little tricks. Before we get started, if this guide ever becomes outdated due to the addition of new tricks, then the title of the video will read outdated and an updated video will be posted in both the description and the comments. Finally, different people have their own preferred ways of getting to level 70, and while I'll present you with several different paths to 70 in this video, I will not be covering every option, just the methods that are most commonly accepted as efficient at this time. I'm about to go over a lot of information in a short amount of time, but don't worry if you didn't catch it. At the end, I'll do a quick recap of everything you'll need to do in order to get the best seasonal start possible. So the season has started in your region and you're ready to play. The first thing you will do is create your seasonal character by either creating a new character or rebirthing one of your previous characters. If you plan on using the rebirth feature, I suggest dumping all of your characters and followers items into the stash before the start of the season, especially if you're playing with a group because you really don't want to keep them waiting. Any items that are not dumped will be automatically sent to the non-seasonal mail when you rebirth, and they must be retrieved on a non-seasonal character within 30 days or they will be lost forever. Now that you have your character ready, set the game to adventure mode on expert difficulty if you're the party leader, and then start the game. Immediately run over to one of your followers and take their weapons. Depending on your class, this will change which of the follower weapons you take. And if you're playing solo, hire your follower as well. Additionally, be sure to equip any of your non-combat pets that you may have so that they can go collect gold for you as you play. Next, open your map and check Act 2 for the bounty to either kill Zoltan Kool or Magda. I'll discuss how to efficiently kill these bosses in just a moment, but if neither of these bounties are in your game, then immediately return to the character screen and do the challenge rift. Do not do the challenge rift before the season begins. I cannot stress this enough because it resets on every Monday, but a season launches on Friday night in each region. It's important to note also that you will need to have done at least one greater rift in order to access challenge rifts to begin with, and this will require you to have had a level 70 character. This goes for both PC and console players. If you have not done this yet and you still want to play a seasonal character, then just skip all the steps in this guide that require a challenge rift cache. If you're completely new to Diablo 3, then take your time, enjoy the game at your own pace, and even play through the campaign all the way through. Once you have completed the challenge rift, hop back onto your seasonal character and open up the challenge rift cache, which you can find in the mail icon on the bottom left of your screen on PC or in the challenge rift cache mailbox in town on console. This cache is going to give you 35 death breaths, 475 blood shards, 5 million gold, 15 of each bounty material, and a bunch of crafting materials. It should be clear that this cache is the first major trick to jumpstarting your seasonal progress. Once you collect all of your goodies, go train the blacksmith, jeweler, and mystic to max level, then go over to Kadala to spend your blood shards. For many classes, you'll want to do this at level 1. There's a link to the Kadala calculator on D3 planner in the description, and this tool will allow you to see what you could possibly get at each level from Kadala. Barbarians will want to roll bracers at level 1 to try to get either Seismic Slam or Hammer of the Ancient Bracers. Crusaders will want to roll shields at level 1 to either get Sweep Attack or Blessed Hammer Shields. Monks should roll Bracers at level 1 for either the Tempest Rush or Wave of Light Bracers. Both give a huge damage modifier, however there's also a chance to get the Exploding Palm Bracers, which may not have a damage modifier but can still help with clearing large packs of enemies. Then some monks may choose to roll Boots to try to get the Lashing Tail Kick Boots, but there's a chance you may get the Crudest Boots instead, which are the weakest of all of these options. Necromancers should roll gloves at level 1 for Grasps of Essence, which give a massive damage bonus to Corpse Explosion, and Demon Hunters can roll belts at level 1 to try to get Hellcat Waste Guards, but there's a chance for two other mediocre belts in that pool as well, so I suggest saving your Blood Shards on Demon Hunters. Witch Doctors can roll Mojos at level 1 and try to get Gazing Demise, 
but it's not necessary to get and most witch doctors may choose to save their blood shards. Finally, wizards have very few good options at level 1 and it's best for them just to save their blood shards. At level 33, wizards do have a chance of getting the etched sigil source and it may be a good option for wizards who have not gotten any good drops up until that point. If you happen to get the legendary you're fishing for, or you're playing a class that doesn't have any good level 1 options, then be sure to also purchase pants for a chance to get pox falls. They greatly increase your clear speed of large groups of enemies. Once you're done spending your shards, if you didn't find Zoltan Cool or Magda bounties earlier, then go look now. You'll want each party member to start their own game, and whoever gets one of these bounties first, everybody joins that person's game, and then goes and kills those bosses. For Zoltan Cool, you will want to kill one or both of the two golems next to the boss. When they die, they will give you enough experience to level up, and that level up will trigger an explosion which will kill the boss. The same goes for Magda, but you'll want to wait for her adds to fully spawn as they do not reward experience points until they are capable of actually attacking you. After this boss bounty has been completed, the next step is to get to level 8. This part is the first major fork in the road as far as progression is concerned and players have one of three options available to them. First, you and your party could jump directly into rifts until you reach level 8, at which point you will head back to town and use the blacksmith to craft yourself a level 8 two-handed weapon. Second, you and your party may choose to start completing Act 1 bounties. You will reach level 8 before you can finish all of the Act 1 bounties, but this method is relying on you not turning in the finished Act of Bounties to Tyrael until you reach level 20, so be sure not to turn this in even if you do complete it, but more on this trick in a moment. Finally, you and your party may choose to go do Massacre bonuses in Halls of Agony level 3, level 2, Fields of Misery, or Temple of the Firstborn. This method requires you to chain together kills using the in-game kill streak, which gives you more and more bonus experience points for long kill streaks. Playing solo, especially as a witch doctor, can be relatively easy to keep this kill streak going. However, playing with a party requires a lot of coordination and communication for this. I suggest this method for experienced and coordinated players only, since it's far too easy to drop the kill streak prematurely. It's also worth noting that the kill streak bonus works in rifts on consoles, so just head straight into rifts if that's the platform you choose to play on. Regardless of the way you choose to get to level 8, once you get there, head back to town and make a two-handed weapon at the blacksmith. From here, I suggest going and getting Kanai's cube from the ruins of Seshiron in Act 3. Once you get your cube, you should be over level 10, so head back to town and check the fence vendors within each town in each act, because these vendors will begin selling rings and amulets that you can now equip. Buy any one that has plus damage on it. Next, we're going to use Kanai's cube to upgrade a rare level 70 weapon to a legendary in an attempt to gain a massive damage bonus by then extracting that legendary power into the cube. For example, barbarians will want to craft a level 70 rare one-handed mighty weapon and upgrade it to legendary using the Hope of Cain recipe in Kanai's cube. Six out of the eight possibilities will provide barbarians with a huge damage increase, and the other two possibilities can be used with a speed whirlwind setup at level 70. So honestly, there's no way to lose with a barbarian. Demon hunters, strangely enough, will want to upgrade a level 70 rare dagger using Hope of Cain, which will give them a guaranteed damage modifier through either Carlay's Point or Lord Greenstone's Fan. Necromancers also gain a guaranteed damage modifier by upgrading two-handed scythes, and Crusaders should upgrade two-handed flails since there are very few bad options available. Monks have a plethora of bad possibilities, but the two best options are either a fist weapon or a Daibo. There's currently a 50% chance to get something useful out of a fist weapon and nearly a 40% chance to get something out of Daibos. And of course, this percentage will change as they add or change existing legendary items. Witch Doctors don't have many good options, but thankfully they don't usually need that kind of help. If you would like to save your materials, then feel free to do so. Otherwise, upgrade a ceremonial knife for a chance at some really big damage increases. Wizards suffer in the same regard as Witch Doctors for this trick, but wizards who wish to try and upgrade an item should upgrade wands. 
It should be noted that there is a small chance that your item, which you upgrade, will have reduced level requirement on it as a secondary stat. Keep an eye out for this, and don't cube it if the item rolls a high enough number so that you can use it between levels 40 and 50. If it's usable above 50, then use your discretion as to whether or not it's beneficial to cube it now or just wait to use it once you hit above 50. Also, there's an even smaller chance that the item can roll both ancient and with reduced level requirement on it. If this is the case, then it's possible that the item can be used as low as level 30. This will happen to a few lucky people each season, and that weapon should certainly be saved if this is the case for you. Once your item is upgraded and put in your cube, if it's useful to do so, it's time to work your way to level 70. Choose to do either rifts or massacre bonuses, or a combination of the two if you start to get bored. Going back to the Act 1 level 20 bounty trick I mentioned earlier, when turning in a completed set of Act Bounties beyond level 20, there is a chance that you may get the Canes or Born set recipe out of your bounty cache. Both of these sets can be worn around level 20, and each one provides a huge experience boost to your entire party. If you started Act 1 bounties or even finished them, don't turn it in until you're at or above level 20 for a chance at getting these recipes. Once you hit level 40, use the blacksmith to craft a level 70 two-handed weapon. We're looking for a weapon with reduced level requirement secondary stat on it, up to a maximum of 30, which means that you can use this item at level 40, even though it's a level 70 item. There may be a chance that you craft an item with reduced level requirement already on it, but if you don't, then you're looking for a weapon with some kind of crowd control secondary on it instead, such as like fearing or freeze or stun. When you go to reroll the secondary at the mystic, reroll whichever secondary is not the crowd control option. This will give you much better odds of getting reduced level requirement because there are so many crowd control options to begin with. Only reroll items up to five times, otherwise the gold requirements will start getting out of hand. If you rerolled an item that many times, it's often better just to craft a new one and start the process again. If you do not get any reduced level requirement item, then it's not the end of the world. If you're running with a party, it's also likely that at least one of you will get one. Once you're able to use your item, return back to the character screen and turn the difficulty up to at least Torment 1 and a maximum of Torment 6, though do this at your discretion based on whether you're playing hardcore or not. Continue leveling as you had previously, either through rifts or killstreaks, and do this all the way until you hit level 70. As a fresh level 70, it's best to focus on finishing the steps in your seasonal journey to get your Hadrix gifts, which are the things that give you your free set pieces for the season. This can only be redeemed once per account in each region, so keep that in mind. The final trick that I always personally suggest is to start doing a full round of bounties around level 55 as you're leveling, but save the turn-ins tutorial until you reach level 70. Turning these in at level 70 will give you one guaranteed jewel crafting recipe per cache, and this will help you complete chapter 4 of the seasonal journey which requires you to have learned 5 jewel crafting recipes. Additionally, it also helps you finish all 5 act bounties needed for chapter 3. The big thing to stress with this method is to not turn in any of the bounties tutorial until after you hit level 70, so make sure the rest of your party is really clear on this. Also, fresh level 70 characters should craft a Sages set from the blacksmith to help gain additional Death's Breath materials early on in the season. As for using any gems while leveling 1 to 70, put rubies in your weapons and helms for extra damage and experience gain. So, to quickly recap this process, go create your seasonal character, set the game to expert on adventure mode, and start the game. Go steal your followers' weapon, and hire them if you're playing solo. Next, check for the Zoltan Cool or Magda bounties in Act 2. If none exist, then leave the game and go do the challenge rift. When killing these bosses, kill the adds next to the boss to kill the boss with your level up explosion. Complete the challenge rift, turn it in, go back to adventure mode, and if you haven't done the boss kill bounty yet at this point, split your party up and join the first person to get one of the two bounties. Next, open up your challenge rift cache, upgrade all the people in town, spend blood shards depending on your class, then go kill the bosses if you still have not done so at this point, and then either go do rifts, kill streak bonuses, or act one bounties until level eight. At level eight, go back to town, 
craft a new weapon at the blacksmith, then head to the ruins of Sheshuron to find Kanai's cube. Once you find the cube, return to town. You should be high enough level to buy rings and amulets from the fence vendors in town, preferably with plus damage on them. Craft a level 70 weapon based on your class and use the Hope of Cain recipe to upgrade it to legendary. Extract it into the cube and utilize its power unless the item either rolls with a good reduced level requirement or is ancient and has reduced level requirement on it. From here, either finish your Act 1 bounties and turn them in at level 20 for a chance for Cain's or Born Set recipes, or continue leveling through kill streaks or rifts. At level 40, Go craft a level 70 two-handed non-class specific weapon at the blacksmith, unless you're a demon hunter, then you kind of have no choice, and try to get reduced level requirement as a secondary stat. Do not roll it too many times, otherwise the gold cost will be too high. Turn the game difficulty up once you're able to use your new weapon, and at level 55 you may choose to complete all of the bounties which you will turn in once you're level 70 for the jewel crafting recipes. At level 70, craft the Sage's set for an early boost to Death's Breath drops and focus on completing your seasonal journey to get your set items. But that is it. That is the easiest way to start your season and to get to 1 to 70 in the quickest way possible. I have a written checklist in the description below for those who prefer to follow it that way, but these tricks will allow you to level your fresh new seasonal character extremely quickly. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I possibly can. If you enjoyed the video, consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash OSWGuild. But with all of that being said, thank you guys for watching, and we shall see you guys next time. Bye.